Hi, Alan Stratton from Aswood Turns. I reviewed uh, several agendas for upcoming uh, symposium and noted a couple of demonstrations on oval bowls. And uh, I've attended a couple of these uh, demonstrations in the past and the ones that I've seen required a very impressive but heavy and expensive jig to do it and had issues with turning speed and such. So, with that in mind, I decided that I would turn one that I've tried in the past, but I thought I could do with current equipment and turn out quite nicely. So this is a segmented piece, some differences in the segmentation on this piece, and that is that each of these rings is of a different height and a different segment count. This is also that I could have a consistent segment here, a full segment of walnut, on each side of the cut and then cut it in half, the bowl in half and glue it together again and le voila an oval bowl. Very doable with the tools that I have right now and I think it turned out quite nice. So let's turn this oval segmented bowl. I've turned oval bowls before but was not sure I got the design right. So this time I spent a little more time playing with the design. I decided on a segmented approach. Given that my initial bowl would be cut in half, I thought to start with a spherical shape. Usually a segmented bowl has the layers brick laid with each segment overlapping by half. But that would mean that after being cut and at the edge, half segments would show. I wanted better than that. So I modeled a sphere with varying segment count per ring. If segment counts are always an even number, I can then cut it in half at a joint and still have the segments overlap. The 3D modeling software showed the results and I think I have it. This is advanced OpenSCAD which gives me many views of my design. I also had the software output coordinates for both inner and outer radii and heights. Then I transferred this information to a spreadsheet for calculations for segment length, ring heights, and ring composition of cherry and walnut segments. This is critical since everything varies and I would have to be very careful to avoid mistakes. So I cut segments and glued up rings according to my plan. Segment counts vary from 6 to 16 per ring. Additional care was required to get the walnut segments in the correct position for my pattern since no two rings are the same. After filling in the center with walnut in the first two rings, I started gluing rings together one by one, always aligning a joint between the side-by-side -side walnut segments. These are the only segments that will provide a joint that I can cut later with the bandsaw. With each additional ring, I cut back the ring height according to my plan. If I kept ring heights consistent, then the rings would appear larger and larger as the eye moves up the sphere to the pole. With the rings together, I can cut back the exterior following my plan, but not too much since the interior plus wall thickness will actually determine the exterior later. Then hollow the interior according to my plan. Most of this I did with my round nose scraper. My only regret is to not have started hollowing earlier when the stack was not as deep. This depth is about the limit that I can go without my deep hollowing setup. If you have never turned a segmented piece, you are missing out. For the most part, turning segmented is like turning all side grain without the interruption of end grain, like in a solid bowl. Then I realized that my design work did not go far enough. If I cut my hemisphere in half and re-glued it, I would still have a hemisphere instead of an oval. I need to extend a couple more rings consistent with my design pattern, again with different segment counts. This time 18 and 20 segments to keep the joint pattern. And go ahead and glue on these two new rings. Now to get serious about hollowing the interior, I also sanded the inside and applied wipe-on poly. The finish may have been premature, but not a big deal since at least it will prevent glue from sticking to the inside where it could be difficult to remove.
For the exterior, I'm using a face plate on the life center to provide stability and to dampen vibration. It is not glued, so I can retract it to assess the wall thickness. I do a lot of shear cuts to remove wood more gradually and keep the curve even as I work the wall thickness down. With this bowl, I did not want to risk parting off the bowl at the lathe. Instead, I have mounted the bowl to my bandsaw jig. The jig ensures a safe vertical cut. Time for the money cut. After carefully aligning to the joint between the two adjacent walnut segments, I can make the cut while keeping track of the blade and the joint. Fortunately, the top is flat and rides nicely on the bandsaw table. Time to glue the two halves together to make the oval bowl. Since the joint is side grain, just like the rest of the ring joints, the joint will be strong. If this were a solid bowl and the joint was end grain, then I would worry about joint strength. Following this, I did a lot of sanding with a 2 inch pad mounted to the drill press to smooth out the joint between the two halves and the half tenon at both ends. This completes my oval bowl. I am very happy with how it turned out. I did not have to purchase an oval jig to have a beautiful bowl. Please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my website as well as on YouTube. Please spread the word by telling your friends about my weekly videos. I also appreciate your comments and questions. Please wear your full face shield whenever the lathe is running. I hate to nag, but are you wearing yours at the lathe?